Joining me today, I'm so excited to have Mayor Scott Gillingham here at the CHVN studio. Thank you for Sylvia, joining us. thank you for having me. It's great to be with you and all the listeners this morning. I want to talk about all things Winnipeg, good and maybe a little bit of the ugly. Uh, recently, there has been a rise in violent crime. I would love to know, what are you aware of going on in Winnipeg to combat this issue and maybe even some good that is being done in this area? There is too much violent crime in Winnipeg. Uh, across Canada, uh, crime and violent crime is measured by what's called the Crime Severity Index. And unfortunately, Winnipeg you know, is near the top of of that index uh, across Canada on a regular basis. But we are working very hard as a city. Our police service is working uh, at, at, at prevention of crime, but not just our police service. We also have many agencies within the city of Winnipeg, like the Downtown Community Safety Partnership. We have biz zones that have ambassadors, uh, the Bear Clan. Uh, um, one of the campaign commitments I have and that we've now enacted is community safety officers on transit buses and around transit stops. All of these agencies are beginning to work together on, on response, but also on crime prevention. And I'm really you know, pleased to say that we at the City of Winnipeg have a good relationship with the provincial government. So myself and Premier Canoe uh, and his ministers and our city councillors are working together to try to collaborate to address crime. One of the things, Sylvia, that we've done recently uh, in partnership with the province of Manitoba is focused on retail crime. And so I'm grateful that uh, the, the province, provincial government has funded and is funding right now um, an initiative to address retail crime so that business owners and customers and employees can feel safer and we can reduce the crime that is going on in and around businesses. It sounds like unity with all of these agencies is very important. So it, it really that. is. There's, there's, we, we as a community, you know, we'll, we'll never get to build the kind of city and communities we want if we're operating in silos. Uh, you know, the principle of unity, the principle of working together uh, to be stronger is, is something that certainly happens and in, in, in holds true in a community in addressing crime. It holds true in faith communities as well, right, in congregations. Yes. Um, we, we really do need to be working together, in, you know, at the city of Winnipeg with the city, the province, the federal government, indigenous governments, businesses, nonprofit agencies, all working uh, together is important. I often have used in my two years uh, now, almost two years in office, the image of a dragon boat compared to kayaks. If we're all out in kayaks, you know, rolling around the river, we're not going to get a lot accomplished. But if we get into the dragon boat, everybody take an oar, everybody get in their seat, everyone row together with a coordinated plan and a coordinated goal, then we can have a greater impact. I would love to know what you believe is the hardest part of being a mayor. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> w one of the hardest parts, I think, of being mayor is the speed at which uh, government moves, which is not fast. So it takes longer than I want to see something accomplished. It, it, it takes longer to get accomplished what we need to get accomplished. Uh, that's just inevitable that I think comes with government. And, and ironically, this, you know, the speed at which we can get something done in Winnipeg or at a municipal level is probably faster than a provincial government can get things implemented and is, you know, and, and the slowest level of government I think usually is, is the federal government because it's the largest. But probably that, it's just the speed because we know the things I think that we need to do to improve the city of Winnipeg to make a safer, healthier, more equitable community. But it just takes, uh, it takes some time to implement the initiatives that we want to see happen. When you put yourself in the running and became mayor, you now are in this position. What is the best part? People. Absolutely, the people. Um, it, it, there's so many people that I get to meet uh, across Winnipeg, all across the city, in, in diverse communities. We are, we are increasingly an ethnically diverse community. There's a richness to that. Um, but there's people all across the city from all walks of life who are committed to Winnipeg, are committed to its health and future. And, and that, that encourages me every time I meet those people. And, you know, I'll, I'll be in a, a grocery store or just maybe out at a, you know, an, an event and people will come up to me and, 
and say, Mr. Mayor, you know, we know we have some challenges in the city of Winnipeg, but we want you to know we're committed to Winnipeg. Let us know how, you know, how, how we can help. And that gives me great encouragement. Talking about being in the public eye, it must be a little difficult sometimes. I would say, how do you find dealing with criticism and maybe for your family as well? Yeah, uh, to be honest, you, you kind of ignore it. it you just do. Uh, sometimes leadership, you know, in any in any organization, uh, you're not going to please everybody. My goal is not to please everybody. Um, my goal is to work with others, to serve others, to do the best that we can to make improvements. And so the, there's, there's, there's like anything else in our life, there's constructive criticism, no matter who we are. And so that criticism I'll listen to because you know that there's people who, who want the best for the city of Winnipeg and their ideas and their, sometimes their, their challenge and criticism can actually be very, very helpful. Um, but when there's people that are chasing, you know, wild conspiracies that, that are critics or when there's people that um, you just know that their philosophy is very different from my philosophy – then you you know we just work with those who are willing to work with us and and you you, you try to um, you you just have to ignore it and so I you know for example social media I use it to broadcast I don't get in back and forth with people and 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 that's because it's very polarized right now and that's un- what's unfortunate right now is that our society is increasingly polarized that that um, that concerns me. Certainly politically, it's, it's increasingly polarized. And um, so you, you just have to work hard with those who are, um, who are committed to the same goals and, and work together on that. My family, um, I'm thankful my, you know, our, our kids are older, they're, they're adults now, and they're mature enough to kind of, you know, um, if dad gets criticized, they kind of let it roll off their back. And and um, and my wife is is a wonderful uh, a wonderful partner and and support uh, in in this journey in this job, and so um, you know we 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 understand that that it comes with uh, with criticism, but it comes with so much upside. There's so many um, enjoyable parts of of being the mayor. It's it's an honor, an absolute honor and privilege to be in this role, and so we do the best we can uh, humbly with others to serve and to try to uh, make Winnipeg a better place for everybody. I think that advice to ignore the naysayers is really good for many of us to take. Yeah. Um, I would love to know, what is your vision for Winnipeg? Vision for Winnipeg is, and I've kind of mentioned it before, is that, is that we become a city that's safer, healthier, uh, more, more equitable, that we're addressing, uh, you know, big challenges like uh, homelessness, addiction, mental health challenges. There's just too many people right now that are still struggling. There's also too many people right now that are, that are struggling to try to find housing, affordable housing. So we're working very hard at getting more housing built. City of Winnipeg now, according to StatsCat, is, you know, our population is over 800,000. We're closer to 845,000 people now. We're getting there. We're getting close to that. So we've really grown rapidly in the last few years. That presents great opportunities. It's exciting, but it prevents, it, it, you know, presents a lot of challenges as well. One of them certainly is on housing. So the vision is that is, is the city where, where it's, it's healthier and, and safer and stronger and where young people um, grow up in and around our community and want to stay here and plant roots here. And, you know, they choose, raise families here, have careers here. Um, so, so it's, it's uh, th- those are the goals we're working at. We have a very exciting thing going on in Winnipeg this year, correct? We do. Tell us a little bit about Winnipeg Well, this is Winnipeg's 150th anniversary as a city. You know, it's interesting, Sylvia, that um, at the first election was in 18, Winnipeg was in 1874. We were formed as a city uh, in, early in 1874. And in the first election, 150 years ago, there were just under 400 people that were eligible to vote. Now, you had to own property, uh, be a male, and be a British citizen to vote in the first election of the city of Winnipeg. And so we've come a long way, thankfully. A long way. <laughs> but we're celebrating our 150th anniversary in Winnipeg. And of course, long before Winnipeg was formed as a city 150 years ago, 
the, you know, the Winnipeg and, and, you know, the area around the Forks specifically has been a center for Indigenous people. It's been the heart of the economy of the region. There was trading. There was people living here long before 150 years uh, ago. But we are celebrating our 150th anniversary. And throughout the year, when we, we have been um, kind of attaching the celebration to established events and festivals. For example, the, the Filipino Street Festival uh, was just held under the great leadership of Leigh Navarro. And, and they, in, in that festival, had a whole portion of celebration of Winnipeg 150. The theme of Winnipeg 150 this year, Sylvia, is our shared stories, our shared future. Mm. Every one of your Winnipeg listeners today has a story, or their families have a story about being in Winnipeg, if they're not Indigenous, when their family came to Winnipeg in the area. Uh, our communities have stories, our faith communities have stories, and we share our stories, but we share the future together as well. And it's really about looking back and looking ahead. I did bring some items today for those looking online. I'll show you. It's like a sweatshirt or a couple of sweatshirts and a couple of mugs as well with our Winnipeg 150 logo. And if I can, the logo was very, very meaningful. Uh, it was created by an Indigenous artist off, uh, from Pegasus First Nation uh, named Jordan Stranger, a very talented young man. And the, uh, the, uh, the artwork in, in the logo is, is representative really of Winnipeg's past and future. There's uh, the, the rivers, the red and the Assiniboine. Um, there's footprints on here representing the journey of reconciliation that we're all on. Mm. There's the Manitoba crocus. Um, and so it's just a beautiful, beautiful logo. And so I'm going to leave these items with you. <laughs> and you can find a way, Sylvia, to, um, you know, through however you want to do it, get them out to some of the listeners um, through, through, uh, through, through some mechanism. So, um, so I'm <laughs> we'll glad, to, glad to sure. share these. Fantastic. Well, we celebrate as well. Love the story behind the logo. Thank you for sharing that. And there is yeah. a great event coming up, if I may, yes. and, and that is, we're calling it, the, it's the Mayor's Ball. So it's going to be a great celebration at the RBC Convention Center, uh, and all of the proceeds of the Mayor's Ball are going to go to our four uh, performing arts groups in Winnipeg. Winnipeg is really, really uh, an, a rich city. In We have professional sports, if you like sports. We have great universities and colleges, and we've got world-class arts. So the funds for the mayor ball, the mayor's ball, uh, will go towards the uh, the symphony, and the Manto Royal Manitoba Theater Center, Royal Winnipeg Ballet, and the Manitoba Opera. So October fifth, Saturday, October fifth, is the mayor's ball at the RBC Convention Center, and anyone who's interested can go to Winnipeg.ca and just scroll down to see uh, the mayor's ball, and and you can purchase tickets there. That sounds incredible. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, and, and uh, wish you a great day. And to all the listeners of CHVN, I wish you a great day as well.